But then a little later on, a radical way to educate your kids. It's called unschooling because it involves no structured education. Kids learn at home what they want, when they want, no tests, no homework. Why wasn't this around when we were going to school? We're going to look at the pros. It's is, is it controversial? It is. Yes, it is. It's got to be, right? Yeah. Okay, we'll find out. All right, a lot to get to. Let's go and do that pretty Thank fast. You. And coming up next, the radical form of education where kids decide what they learn and when they learn it. But is it for your family? That's right after this. Up in the morning and out to school. This morning on Education Nation Today, a radical form of learning. It's called unschooling, where kids receive no structured education at all. Here's NBC's Mara Schiavacampo. I like this new neighborhood. The Bentleys are getting settled in their new home in Milpitas, California. Good schools just steps from their home. I like living close to a school because it makes it a safer environment. But the closest the family will come to their new schools is by walking past them. I get to learn whatever I want, whenever I want. Parents Lisa and Greg Bentley believe in something called unschooling. Even though they each graduated at the top of their high school class, their daughters, Zoe and Tegan, have never set foot in a traditional school. In fact, the Bentleys say the girls are their own teachers. I consider myself a facilitator of my children's education, facilitating our children's learning by bringing the world to them and them to the world without the constraints of a school building. Zoe and Tegan are among the estimated two million children considered homeschooled in this country. But unlike traditional homeschooling, with unschooling, there are no lesson plans, no tests, no rules, and it's all legal. The premise of unschooling uh, is that parents uh, have the right to determine uh, how their children should be educated. The degree to which unschooling is regulated will vary state to state. In general, there is less rather than more regulation. So while kids across America are inside learning the fundamentals. This mountain range overlooks the city of Milpitas, California. The Bentleys are out exploring the geography around them. Traveling is considered a big part of the learning process. Really big. Back at the house, no homework pressure. Instead of a book report, 15-year-old Zoe, an aspiring NASA scientist, is working on her website about the geology of planets. 11-year-old Tegan is mastering puzzles and multitasking. So, 15. And later, measurements instead of multiplication for the fashion enthusiast. Just because you're not in school learning doesn't mean that you're not learning at all. What learning means is that you pick up new skills, you find out more information, you can talk to people, uh, search for things on the internet, anything at all. We're trying to show them uh, how to learn for themselves and how to actually find their own goals and accomplish those goals. Experts estimate that kids numbering in the tens of thousands are setting their own unschooling curriculum, full of discovery and research, but free of regimen, report cards, and grade point averages. And they say that could be a troubling equation. There's any number of concerns you might have about unschooling. We don't have metrics. These children don't get assessed regularly. So we don't know that the kids are learning what they need to master. Parents may not necessarily be effective educators. The Bentleys say they don't need tests to see results. For their family, unschooling is never less, always more. Unschooling is about doing as much as possible. You never stop learning. You can learn from anything, anyone, anywhere. For today, Mara Schiavocampo, NBC News, New York. Robin Silverman is a child and teen development expert. Robin, good morning to you. Good morning. Boy, you got to know your kids. I was thinking about unschooling in my house would go over about as well as unbathing. Mm. It would get ugly pretty quickly. So what do parents need to consider? Well, you do need to know your child. Are they self-motivated, self-propelled individual learners that get up in the morning and go for it? And also know yourself that parent needs to be in involved just because you're doing unschooling doesn't mean hands off it means you get more involved as i was watching that piece of two things kept jumping into my mind one is if these kids aren't assessed in other words there are no tests mm -hmm. right. how do we ever judge them and compare them to students their own age? Well, we know these children, the parents know these children. How are they learning? Are they getting into the mix of things? But 
We don't know, are there going to be gaps in their education in the fundamentals? We don't know if, if there's going to be a socialization issue unless you get them into 4-H, into scouts, into martial arts. But that's arts. with homeschooling in general. Mm -hmm. I'm talking more the unstructure or the lack of structure in unschooling. The other thing is, what happens? Do these kids not want to attend college? Or what happens when it becomes time to apply to college? What do they use mm -hmm. as, a, as a record? Mm -hmm. They are using their resume, their life and learning resume rather than a transcript. What have they been doing while their peers have been in school? And many of these kids will go on to college. They will go on to higher learning and they will have to jump through the same hoops, the SATs, the placement right. tests as everybody else. But and having have never ways. taken tests during their high school mm -hmm. and junior high school careers, is that going to be harder for them? It's, it's not always the case that they haven't taken tests. Some of them actually supplement their learning with more structured classes, but some will have to learn how to take those Tests. Something else that jumped out at me was that this idea that travel is often mm -hmm. a very big part of this learning. Well, that means to me that this is for wealthier people because a lot of people who are of a lower economic status cannot afford to travel and take time off work to tour their kids around. It's an interesting thing because parents do need to have somebody who's going to be home and going to be involved in this child's learning. You can't just put a child in front of a computer and say, go for it. You need to be out, ready to get your hands dirty and take that path less traveled. What do parents need to know about state-by-state -state regulations that might govern this? Well, you know, there's very few state regulations that say you have to do this, you have to be tested, and that's one of the problems here. So they need to know what is required of them at the end of the day, but many of them are, many of these states aren't requiring specific I think a lot, things. People are going to be talking about this. A lot of people are going to be opposed to it, but there are going to be others who say, if it motivates my child mm -hmm. and makes them more interested in the world around them, then maybe it's a good thing. The passions are fostered here, and that's something that we can all learn then, can't we? Absolutely. Robin Silverman. Robin, thank you very much. Thank I appreciate you. it. And just ahead, the best hotels.